All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's Sunday Business Sermon on how I use Notion. As always, I have a slide share that I would like to put up on the screen. Actually, hold on. There's, I don't want to do a full screen share quite yet. There we go. Okay. So first, let me describe what Notion is for those of you who may not really be familiar with it yet. If you have ever used Evernote, uh, which was the tool I used prior to Notion, uh, if you've ever used the Microsoft, uh, I think it's called OneNote, if you've used anything like, um, what is it, Bear Writer or even Notes in uh, on the Apple iPhone, those sorts of things are kind of analogous or, you know, they serve a similar function. But what's special about Notion is that it's very powerful in terms of its functionality. And in fact, I've only scratched the surface of what it can do. I do not consider myself a power user by any stretch of the imagination. I've seen some miraculous things happen with Notion with other businesses. Um, so I'll, I'll be showing you some of the basics and some of the, maybe one step up from the basics uh, for using it. But I think sometimes what's a little bit hard to grasp about Notion is that it, it gets used for so many different things. And part of it is figuring out what role it's gonna play for your writing or for your business or for your, your personal life. Many businesses and companies use it as uh, an information hub resource wiki. Some people use it strictly for notes. Some people use it for um, collaboration. Some people use it for composing. But all of Notion is really based on notes, um, or you could call them pages. Uh, I'll probably be calling them uh, notes and pages interchangeably as we go through today's session. So each of the notes or pages that you create, they all start to pile up on the left-hand side of Notion, the application. You can see it here um, in the... Acme incorporated Notion uh, screen where we've got favorites at the top and then a workspace shared private. And then there's one specific note selected, Acme Home, that we're seeing in the main box. So that's something you'll want to grasp right away about Notion is how it divides these little notes that you create into these buckets, which is important for its functionality. So there are notes or pages that you can favorite, and they will appear at the very top of your sidebar that navigates you through all of the things that you have stored in Notion. There's also what's called the workspace, which is um, things generally that you're collaborating with other team members on. Then you have shared, which again, this, these are things that are shared out. Again, it might, it might be similar to a workspace feature. And then you've got a private, area where no one else can see those notes. It's really just for your, um, your use, your eyes only. Um, the workspace and the shared, there's, uh, when you sign up for a Notion account, you get charged by user. So that's part of what the workspace is referring to. If you're just using it by yourself, there might not be so much difference between the workspace and the shared. Um, and the private, um, you may end up having everything in just one or two buckets. But the more people who are working with you, the more that these differentiating uh, categories uh, become pretty important. Now, each Notion note or each page, this is what's, again, very, quite special about Notion. And at least when I last used Evernote, it did not have this kind of um, visual component, flexibility, column structure. Notion almost allows you to build a full on web page. And in fact, people do use Notion to build websites. I'll show you that a little bit later. But you can, it's almost like a canvas. You can add images and documents and columns and check boxes and uh, all sorts of uh, interactive items to it. Uh, again, I'm not a power user, so I don't often use it in more complex ways that include lots of columns like this or lots of images. Um, I'm very text driven in my usage. But especially if you're working a lot with multimedia, I think you're going to really like Notion's ability to store that media uh, and, and put it at your fingertips. 
I think the number one use for most people when they start out with Notion, especially if you're if you've been an Evernote user in the past, or you use stickies, or you use some of the more simple applications, note taking is you know that's probably the first thing you'll be using it for. And so it's you know if you attend meetings, um, wh whatever the case might be, it's very straightforward to start keeping a record of of meeting notes in Notion. People use it for journaling, for composing blog posts. I've seen uh, templates for composing books even. I don't know that I would wanna compose a whole book in Notion, but it could be done if you wanted to. Certainly, I, I definitely use it for short form pieces. So pieces like that are less than several thousand words. I use it for writing my blog posts, for example. As I mentioned, businesses will often use Notion to build out a resource page or a wiki. Um, so this is something where people might have certain access to actually edit or change documents in that wiki, update them, or it might be view only. And so you can have different parts of your team who have access to just certain documents based on their work function or their work role. There's a lot of doc sharing that happens in Notion, so you can upload documents right into the interface. It could be a Word doc, a PDF, doesn't matter. It, it can store those. Uh, so it's, you know, if you have, this was really helpful for me when I'm dealing with client work, and I have one place where I can store all of the notes I have, meeting notes I have about meeting with that client. I can also store all of the documents that pertain to that client. It's all in one place and it's very visual and useful. One, you know, the one-stop shop. I don't have to go over to my Word files. I don't have to, you know, go to my emails. I don't have to, you know, it's all in one place. It's also possible to use Notion for project management, although I don't know how much I could advocate using it as an alternative to something like Trello or Asana, which are like workhorses, work, real workhorses of project management. But I think you know, for more advanced users, I don't see any reason why it couldn't be used for that. Um, and one, of, one reason why is because Notion supports spreadsheets um, and data entry, and it also integrates um, it integrates really well with lots of other applications. And this is another thing that makes Notion so special is that if you're a big Google Docs user or MailChimp user, or you know, there are ways to set it up so that it pulls data from these places into Notion. Um, so it can be very useful, again, to help keep all of the information and data you need in one place. So let me back up for a second. Um, I've mentioned that Notion can be used, in fact, to do websites, and that's because Notion notes are just kind of ready-made to be turned into web pages. You can share a link, and it looks very nice when people load it in a browser. It doesn't mean they can edit it or anything. Um, they're only going to have view access, but this functionality uh, doesn't cost any extra. It's available to you for any, any single note in Notion or a collection of notes. Again, it's very flexible and up to you um, what notes are going to be available to the public versus what is just for your private consumption. Now, some of the things I've shown you, um, especially that website I just showed you right here, you know, some of these things look kind of fancy and maybe even complex. And this has driven a really significant marketplace for templates. So there are Notion templates out there that you can find for free. Uh, for pay, um, and the, they look beautiful, and they can help get you started using Notion if it kind of intimidates you figuring out how to use all of these blocks in a way that makes sense. So here is a Notion template that someone created uh, for college students, you know, which has you know names of the course and the weekly schedule and the weekly to-do list. And so what happens is, if someone has created a Notion template, they can save it as a template for other people to use, share the link for people to download straight into their Notion application. Um, or you, like I said, sometimes they make them available only if you pay. Uh, the cost isn't significant. There's one, one very popular offering that I think costs $39 and it gives you a whole suite of templates for lots of the most popular purposes uh, Notion is used for. All right, so now that I've kind of introduced you to Notion in general, 
I, I want to talk about how I personally use it for my business. Oh, and I see that there's a question here before I move on to that from Katrina saying that I mentioned Notion is a one-stop shop um, with all the info, hence you don't have to check your email, et cetera. Um, so she's asking, does Notion automatically import email or is that something you would have to do yourself? It's possible there could be an integration. I'm not using one of those integrations myself. Um, mainly, I'm just saying that using Notion prevents me from having to go back into my email to fetch file attachments or to collect um, communications that I know that I'm going to want to reference in the future. So as soon as I have an email in hand with something that's important, like for client work, I copy and paste it into the Notion note. I move the attachments over to the Notion note so I don't have to be digging through my email for that information in the future if I know that I'm going to have to reference it frequently. Uh, but I imagine there are integrations out there that could help with that if you're looking for one. Suzanne asks, uh, is there any chance it has a Gantt function? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I've seen the word. I don't think I've actually heard it spoken. Um, I think that's a project management tool, if I'm not mistaken. It's possible. I mean, I have to imagine that someone has um, raised this. Let me take a look. In fact, I'll just um, do a little Google search here. Um, yeah, there's something called a timeline view, um, which is a type of Notion database that would be similar to what you're looking for, Suzanne. So something that I do if I'm curious about, does Notion do X? Um, if you just put no, put go to Google, put in the word Notion, put in what you're interested in, whether it's, you know, Gantt chart or um, a travel spreadsheet or novel plotting, and you will probably find something uh, already out there for you to use. Uh, Michelle notes that Notion doesn't have folders. So how do you combine different files for one client project into one location? Um, I might circle back to that question because I think some of this will become obvious as you see how I use it. Um, and part of it, Notion is designed in such a way that you can put all of your files in one place visually if that's what you like. Um, but uh, we'll come back to that, Michelle. And if it's not clear by the end of this, we'll, we'll explore it further. And I did pronounce Gantt right. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, so, uh, a different Suzanne asks if I use Notion more as an app on my phone or on my desktop. And I use it equally in both places. I mean, I use Notion 80% of the time for work. So usually when I'm doing work, I'm at my desk on a laptop, I'm not on my phone, but um, if I think of something work-related during off hours, I just pop open the app and I add it um, to a Notion note. Or if I'm you know, out having lunch with someone and I need to reference something or I wanna send them something, I can just pop open Notion and do that. So I do use it for on-the-go purposes, um, but primarily I'm using it at my desk. And it does sync between all your devices um, there's a tablet version, an iPhone version, the desktop version. There's sometimes a little bit of funkiness with the offline access. Um, there have been moments where I didn't have the offline access I wanted, but it's improving all the time and it's supposed to be available to you if you don't have an internet connection. Okay, so back to how I'm using Notion. The the one the note the note that I have up constantly uh, is my to do list. It is sitting at the left left hand side of my desktop, open all the time. I never close it, so I always see what's coming up, and I know what I have to get done for that day. And it, this to do list goes out for about a month. So I'm really you know as some as I I, I slot in my deadlines for myself. Uh, client meeting preparation, and and even I note what I'm doing, what I need to get done on the weekends, um, since sometimes work has, uh, spills over into that time. So it's really, as you can see, I don't even do it as a to-do list. I just do it as a bullet list, um, because once it's done, I don't want to see it again. <laughs> but if you prefer having that track or that uh, the tracking of what's completed, you can format it as a to-do list if you prefer. I use it a lot for editorial planning. 
So again, just to make sure that I'm orienting you correctly, notice that on the left-hand side here of the note is my organization. And this more or less works as a folder system. So I've got a primary to-do list with a lot of sub notes available to me. And so everything can springboards out and underneath. Um, and it's, you know, you can get as complex or as deep with that as you want. Um, so editorial planning, when I'm planning, for instance, a, a newsletter, I have a, a paid newsletter that I write and publish called The Hot Sheet. I have the current issue that I'm working on, what I'm planning to write about noted as a reminder, and then ideas for next issues underneath that. Um, similar with the guest posts that go up at my site at janefriedman.com, you know, some of those get scheduled really far in advance. So I have a guest blog post schedule saved in Notion under my primary to-do list. Um, my business partner and husband, Mark, also has access to this so you can see what's on tap. He's the one who loads all those guest posts um, and we can write notes to each other and hear about you know, the status uh, of each one. My free newsletter, Electric Speed, um, this also falls under editorial planning to some extent, but I consider it more of a like an idea dump or idea storage. I'm always encountering things that I might want to mention in that newsletter, new digital tools or resources. So anytime I spot something, I just open up this very specific note and I put in the link. Um, if anyone makes a suggestion to me over email, I copy and paste it. I put it in this note. So when I'm ready to compose the next issue of Electric Speed, all I, I don't have to remember anything. I don't have to go back through my email. I just open up this note and I decide, okay, what am I going to write about this week? I run any number of webinars during the year. And of course, it's important to keep track of what's on tap, what's been scheduled, what materials I have, um, what's still required. And so uh, this is something I collaborate on again with, with my business partner, Mark, who does the production on these. And so there are a lot of different notes pertaining to the webinars in Notion. There's the, the schedule, there's the script I use for the beginning and, and the ending of the webinars. There's the history of all the webinars I've given, uh, testimonials um, and all sorts of minute information about customer service as well. So this is uh, helps us stay organized and be referencing the same information about what's happening. For classes, whether it's a webinar or something that's more intensive, I sometimes create a, uh, a guide using Notion as a publishing tool. And then I make that available to students uh, so this is essentially creating a website for people. They're not actually getting into my Notion note at all, uh, but that's where I build it. And I find I really like this method of resource of creating resources that I want to update frequently because it means that the student will always have the most up to date information if they go to the public link that I share. All I have to do is go into Notion and update it. It automatically updates on the site. Now you might ask, why don't you just put this on your website? And you know, there are a lot of reasons why um, that I won't get into that are very particular for me. Um, but Notion is just a lot easier to get in really fast, make a quick change, and then get out. You know, there's no coding. Um, I don't have to worry about um, you know Gutenberg blocks. Uh, it's just it's lightweight and that's all I need. It's a lightweight tool that's quick and fast um, and, uh, and in some ways does the job better than the website. The other thing is, is it keeps this resource relatively private. So if I only, like if I put it on my website, it means I would, and I only want it to be available to students. That means I either need to password protect it, which is a pain because people forget the password, or it becomes publicly available and indexable um, unless I start flipping switches to make it more private. Again, Notion just you know takes all of that technical um, backend uh, know-how, just takes it out of the equation. If people have the link to the Notion note, great. Um, they're gonna have the most updated version of this resource. So this is how it looks in Notion. Um, it looks like just any other Notion note. If people load it in their browser, like in Chrome or Safari, 
this is how it looks. And, you know, if I preferred it to have three columns, I could create three columns. If I preferred it to have lots of images, I could do that. Um, it's what you're looking, just to emphasize what you see here is pretty bare bones, but I think it's very functional and very clear. I store a lot of information in Notion that I just access frequently, like for instance, um, my paid newsletter, The Hot Sheet, which has been going on for six years now, I often need to access links to the issues. They're all stored in MailChimp. So I've got all of those links sitting uh, there that I can copy and paste um, and send to subscribers if they're asking for them. And, and I just have it for my personal reference as well. Similarly, for teaching and workshops, speaking engagements, I tend to teach similar workshops or I repeat workshops over a period of years rather than have to come up with new descriptions or rewrite them or find them. I keep them all in one bucket right here as along with my bio and a link to my online speaking kit. So I just copy and paste the relevant workshop description into an email when people need it or ask for it. Similar, similarly with speaking, I use a spreadsheet in Notion to keep track of my the upcoming engagements, uh, where it's located, if I've got my travel booked, what the speaking fee is, if I've, if I've, tech, if I've done a tech check, meaning I've confirmed that they're going to have AV in the room, um, I make note of the commitment that I've made, and then I can also, of course, link uh, to the website or paste in any ancillary material. I've already mentioned that I use Notion a lot with clients and I keep it all stored in one place. It also makes it searchable for me very quickly since Notion is universally searchable. Every part of every note, you can, you can do a universal search and find it. So if I just know the client's last name, I can bring up the note very quickly. And then something that I have in progress, this is, um, this is kind of like what you might call the Jane Friedman Media uh, Wiki, company wiki. Um, my husband and I are starting to build out a customer service guide so that in the future, if we actually want to take a vacation and not check our email for 24 hours, um, we can give this customer service guide to someone that we hire uh, to take care of emails uh, in our absence. And so they can just reference, you know, oh, I, you know, someone didn't get their webinar Zoom link. How do I get that to them? And so we'll putting in, we're putting in the instructions step-by-step step for someone who may not be familiar with the business yet. So it's a training tool um, and a reference tool. All right. So I zoomed through that pretty quickly. Um, I am going to start a different type of share. I'm going to actually share my live uh, notion um, as I go through the questions. So give me just a second. There we go. All right. So now you should be seeing my current notion. Um, You'll notice that again, I've, I've got it to default to the primary to-do list. Um, and I tend to keep it pretty you know, narrow like this, um, but some people keep it rather large, like you know, Notion can be dragged out as, as big as you like, um, but I tend to keep mine pretty contained. All right, so I'm gonna get a drink here and then look at the questions. Tracy asks if there are any tools I've stopped using since I started using Notion, um, or did I just add it to everything else that, I, that I'm using? So this essentially replaced Evernote for me, um, but Evernote wasn't doing as much heavy lifting as Notion is. So I think Notion has replaced, in addition to Evernote, um, it's replaced a lot of Google Doc sharing, um, some, some of the things I was using uh, Dropbox for, it's replaced uh, Microsoft Word in many instances. Although I don't know, like if you're still submitting to publishers, if you're creating long manuscripts, I don't know that you would be able to eliminate Word. Uh, it's, I still use Word when I have to send documents back and forth with clients, like edited book proposals, that sort of thing. Um, it's allowed me to 
get rid of any sort of stickies situation. Like I used to use the stickies app in Apple quite a bit um, or notes, and, but I would end up having things in three, four or five different places. Um, so all of that stuff where I would have thing, little bits saved in different pla in different environments, that's, that's all over. And of course it's replaced my website as an information source in some instances. So I would say for most people, it's if you already use a note-taking system, it's obviously gonna replace that. If you have multiple note-taking systems, it's all gonna now shrink down into one place. If you're using Microsoft Word or other composition software, it's probably going to take the place of that, especially for collaborative work or things that really don't go any further than your desk. Um, so I think that, I hope that helps. Um, I know there are people who are able to use it to eliminate project management systems, but it, it would really depend on your use case, whether or not you, th you think Notion could do that for you. Uh, Karen asks if I recommend things as well as Notion, and I'm afraid I'm not familiar with things, Karen, uh, but if there's anyone listening who does use things, um, please speak up in the chat or in the Q&A um, and let us know if, if what you think the relationship is between those two things, if anything. Uh, so now I'm back to the question that Michelle raised about Notion not having folders. And so how do I combine different files for one client or project into one location? Now, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't use Notion in a, be a beautiful way, like in a designerly way. It's in a very kind of like just straightforward, functional way. Um, but, you know, when, once I get into consulting and client notes, um, I don't want to like reveal uh, too personal of information here. Um, but, you know, if I were to click into one of these, what you're going to see are files collected in certain places, and then my notes, and then other information that the client has sent me. And so it all just appears on the same screen. Well, let me see if it would be kind of similar to maybe this query letter guide, I suppose, um, where, you know, if I click into some of these areas, I don't know that I have any files attached to these. Let me think, where do I have files saved? Um, under webinars, I have instructor guidelines. And so there are moments in here where I have, you know, like the marketing description template is linked right here. You can click on it and it will download a Word document. Um, similar here. If you click here, you'll go to Google Drive. I could just keep it in the note. Um, I was lazy. <laughs> I didn't put it in there. Um, I also have sub notes under this um, that go you know, to extra information. And then I've got, um, I've got a to-do list down here and then Better secrets to better slide design, um, where you notice I've I've embedded some images. So that's probably the best, I guess, explanation I have for I don't know why folders aren't necessary, or that there's already kind of a folder functionality at work here. I treat it as folders, um, so I hope that helps clarify what it can do. All right. Uh, Dana says, can your students download the resources or only access via Notion's web link? It can only be accessed through the web link. So if I go, where is that? Here's the query letter guide. Um, I'll just show you, let's see. Let me show you that in the browser. I'll switch the sharing over. Try that one more time. There we go. All right. So here's the browser. Now, one thing that can be done, like if I were sharing this resource with you, and actually uh, for those of you who are watching here, um, I'll just put that link into the chat if you want to check it out yourself. There is the ability, you'll notice this button that says duplicate. And if you have a Notion note or a Notion account, you can actually duplicate that into your own Notion system. Um, I'm not going to go through that process. 
for you here, but that's what you're looking for to duplicate. Um, and then you can see here, if you if you don't realize I've shared this with you as a Notion site, uh, there's some explanations here. So yeah, that's it is possible to capture it. Um, but one of the reasons I didn't want to make it downloadable is that I'm always updating this. So I want to make sure that people, or I would like for people to access the most up-to-date, although I realize, you know, I could take this down at any time and then it becomes inaccessible. And I know that's a concern for some people, but that's, um, but the duplicate function is there for people who fear, um, who fear that um, the death of the document. All right. Uh, Stan asks, does Notion have a robust backup in place? Yes. So let me go back to my Notion note here. They do have for each note that you create a page history. So if you click on the page history, you will go to all of the different versions. Um, you'll notice that I'm not on a plan that's good enough to access versions older than 30 days, but that if that's important to you, then you can do that. Um, so I have, I mean, knock on wood, I've been using Notion for about two years, maybe. I have not had any issues with notes disappearing or with backups. Um, if I had, do have to resort to a backup, it's usually because I made a stupid decision to delete something or to change something without, you know, uh, not doing my due diligence. So, so far so good. I haven't had a problem. Uh, Anita asks, does Notion work for organizing research like sources, notes, something like Scrivener? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's ideal for that. I think, although I wanna add the caveat that when I wrote my book, The Business of Being a Writer, which had a lot of footnotes and resources and things that I needed to keep track of, I was writing that in Scrivener. So in that process, I kept everything in Scrivener because I, I, I like having things in one central location. I don't want to be jumping around. However, um, when I go to do the new edition of that book, you know, I have a I have a notion note here that's specifically about that book. Um, all of the things I want to remember for the time when it's time to update. And so you'll notice all of that stuff and, you know, corrections, revision notes, resources to add, blah, blah, blah. When it, but when I start working in Scrivener, I'm going to start, you know, as I pull from this or I need to cite my sources or I need to remember something, it's going to go in the Scrivener document when it's that when I'm working in that formal way. Uh, Katrina says, is there any way you should post a screenshot of your to-do list on the phone? Um, are, are Katrina, are you asking if I could? I'm not sure what you're asking. We sh um, I mean, you could. It could post a screenshot of your to-do list on the phone. Ah. Um, do I have my phone with me? I do not. <laughs> I don't have my phone with me, but I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll post it on Twitter. Um, Katrina, if you're on Twitter, my Twitter handle is it is um, is Jane Friedman. So I'll I'll post it there for you to see later. Um, it looks it looks very much like this. You know, it's um, it's pretty pretty much what you see is what you get. Regardless, you'll notice that the Notion note um, reflows based on the size of the screen. So it's already pretty friendly, no matter how I try to constrain it. And I can also um, take away the sidebar if I wish. So, you know, you're probably, you're seeing something on the phone that looks like that, um, if that makes any sense in the screen share, and it might not. Um, so, but I will post something on Twitter to give you an idea of what that's like. Uh, someone's wondering what the learning curve is for someone who's not too tech savvy. I, th you know, Notion is not punishing. You know, all you really need to do is start typing. Um, and a lot of the things that you're seeing here are, it's, it's just drag and drop functionality. Um, if you know how to, you know, click arrows and drag and drop things and type some text, 
it's, you know, it's really no biggie. I think it takes a little bit of time to get used to the blocks here. So you'll notice that each line of text is a block that can be moved anywhere in the note like this. And I think that's a little tricky for some people to get used to. Um, but once you understand that's how it works, you know, it's fine. And if you want to add things, it's very easy. You, you click the plus sign and you have a list of all of the different sorts of blocks that you can add. You don't have to remember what they all are. It, it gives you this, um, this selection. And you can see there are a lot. Um, And then, but otherwise, I mean, you just start typing like this and it works. Uh, and if you want something to go away, you can either highlight it and press delete, or you can select it as a block and delete it. Um, and you'll notice that there are a lot of other options here where you can change the color. Um, you can comment on it if it's a collaborative sort of link, uh, uh, document. Um, if you want to share it, you just go up to the share button and you toggle this button, share to web, and you can copy it and then send the link wherever you want. You can allow editing, allow comments, search engine indexing, um, allow duplicate as template if you want someone to be able to duplicate your work as a template. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a lot of it's self-explanatory once you get in there. Um, and I think it's a gentle, there is a learning curve, but I think it's a gentle one. Okay. Uh, Tracy says, you mentioned earlier that you would not use Notion for a book length manuscript. What tool or tools do you recommend for managing the research and composition of a book length manuscript? So I've given away the answer, I think already. I use Scrivener. Uh, for that, which does have a more significant learning curve than Notion in my estimation. Um, for the first book I did, did I use publishing? Did Publishing 101, was that in Word or Scrivener? I can't remember now, but I can't imagine writing a book in Word at this point. That to me would just be torture because it's so hard to move things around. For nonfiction, I want to be able to look at things from a really high vantage point. I need to see the organization and the structure. Um, and also Scrivener has a lot of great tools for you to designate what stage of draft something is in and to have summaries and to code it and with colors. And, you know, there's just a lot there that helps, helps you understand where you're at with your project. Um, so I do highly recommend Scrivener for nonfiction writers in particular, but lots of novelists use it, uh, maybe more novelists in the end. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other composition software I would recommend aside from Scrivener. And I can't think of one. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But if for those of you active in the chat, feel free to recommend any solutions that you'd like. Um, Rena says, if you're going back and forth between your phone and desktop or both being updated in real time, is there any lag? I think Notion does a great job on this. So as soon as I update this list, like I can close it like that, I just made it go away. Now I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna bring it back <laughs> after I've closed it. Um, and I hope you noticed that I just really quickly did a TK bullet. And so now I'm gonna bring it up again and you'll see that it's there, even though I didn't give it any time to save, it's just instant. And so that, because it saved there and I was able to bring it back right away, it would also immediately update on the phone. So I haven't had any issues with that. It's very, very swift. Okay. Uh, David says, where does Notion sync? Uh, and do you have issues with syncing conflicts? Evernote has been bad about this. Yes, that is in fact why I left Evernote. Thank you for bringing that up, David. I had massive syncing conflicts and they were making my life really unpleasant. And I would have to rebuild notes. I would have to rescue them from page histories and it just became untenable. And so that's why I left. Um, I've never had that problem with Notion. Um, there was only one blip that I've experienced. And there was a moment where the Notion server, I guess it's their server or their cloud storage or whatever it is that runs their system, it went down. I think it went, it might've gone down for a full hour and you could, you knew it. Uh, if you were on Twitter, because every student 
and worker who uses Notion like in the world let out a collective scream <laughs> um, because in some cases they just didn't, they couldn't pull down the data if it wasn't synced for offline use. So earlier I mentioned that offline use can sometimes be a little iffy. Like if you don't have an internet connection, you may or may not get access to all of your notes. I haven't yet found the determining factor on that. So for some people that was a huge, huge blow like of trust uh, in Notion. So all of that is saved to their systems. You know, it's not, to my knowledge, I don't think you can save it anywhere else. So that could be a deal breaker for some people. Um, but in all of the, the time I've used it, it's only happened that once. And I, fortunately, it's, that problem didn't affect me or my workday, but it did affect a lot of other people. Uh, Courtney asks if I ever dictate, dictate into Notion from my phone. I'm not a, someone who's into dictation, but you could do it if you wanted to. Um, do I ever use the import from Evernote function? And if so, how did the process go? Yes, that is how I made the switch. I used that function specifically. So for those who don't know, if you're an Evernote user, and I think they support other softwares as well, they have an import, a specific import function, and it was seamless. It worked exactly as I expected it to. And um, I was up and running in no time. I didn't have to do any cleanup. Uh, it was very straightforward. Um, Anita asks, what's a good tutorial for learning Notion? And give me just a second because, um, let's see if I can find the one that I'm most familiar with. Yes, so there's a specific course called Notion Mastery. I'm going to, uh, put the link into the chat here, if I can find it amongst all my windows. Where did it go? Um, ha, here we go. So notionmastery.com is one of the ones that I've seen that's very popular. It's been recommended to me, in fact, by a reader when I was just getting started with Notion, someone said, you should check this out. Um, there are lots of options out there. I'm not saying this is the only one, but I know this is um, this one's been tested. Uh, Suzanne asks, uh, does Notion integrate with your calendar? Uh, she relies a lot on her calendar for to-dos, uh, the Mac calendar that is. I'm afraid I don't know. So you would have to Google around and see um, how people deal with that. I imagine you're not the only one who is interested in that sort of functionality. Um, I keep my Google calendar separate from what's happening in Notion and I don't have any to-dos related to my Google Calendar. Um, it's just it's just for me to see what what's taking up my day time-wise. I don't use it as a productivity tool. Um, so you'll I'm afraid you'll have to kind of dig around to see Suzanne what what might be available for that. Uh, Charlene asks if you can import notes and stickies easily. I don't know about the stickies in Apple specifically. Um, but definitely if it's an established software like Evernote, I imagine you can find something. Let me, in fact, let me see um, what Notion touts as available. Give me just a second. Okay, so you can directly import plain text, Microsoft Word, uh, CSV, spreadsheet files, HTML, Markdown. You can also import from Con Confluence, Asana, Evernote and Trello, just to name a few. Um, there are others. So I imagine oh, you can also um, import from Google Docs, Microsoft Excel. Um, you can integrate it with Slack for those of you who are Slack users. So there's there's probably an option out there that could that could help you. Uh, Brenda asks if it works with Otter. Um, she uses Otter as she drives, mm, not to my knowledge, but again, because there are so many people using Notion, it's possible someone has come up with an integration or a solution. So I would, I would Google it and see, um, what, what the current, uh, advice is on that. Yvette asks if I evaluated Notion versus Clip, ClickUp. 
and then choose Notion. I'm afraid I don't know about ClickUp. So um, nope. And, and there wasn't really anything that was even close to Notion in terms of functionality. Um, I think I may have considered bare notes at some point, um, but but Notion was just such a pleasure to use that it there was really no one in, in competition. Wynn asks if you can use Notion when you're offline and then do the changes you make sync up when you're back online. Yes, for the most part, with that caveat that sometimes its behavior is a, a slightly unpredictable. So I just think that maybe with some older notes, maybe if you haven't accessed them in a while, it might be tougher to, to bring them up. So if you were to bring up a note offline that maybe you hadn't looked at in a while, it's possible it might not load. Um, but if it does load and you make some changes, then it, it's going to sync immediately when you get uh, online again. Uh, Wendy asks, how do you put something into Notion? So if you put it into Notion, does it exist anywhere else on your local machine? So let's say she has an auto transcript and she wants to store that interview for reference while writing. So really what you're doing is you're just um, dragging the document from your desktop into Notion. So let me do a full screen share and I can show you what that looks like. There's gonna be uh, a little bit of weirdness here while I do that. I hope the whole, I think the whole screen is sharing now. So give me just a second. So I'm gonna take this document right here and I'm just gonna drag it over. You'll notice it makes a little highlight and I'm just gonna let go now. And you'll notice it starts to upload. And there it is. That's it. You can do that with literally any file. Um, it could be a PDF, an image, a transcript, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't want it there. So I hope that shows you know that it's not um, it's not rocket science to to put media into your Notion note, but and and the document still resides for in the source. So that document is still sitting on my desktop. It hasn't gone anywhere. Um, if I wanted to trash it, because I moved it into Notion, I could do that. So I could then, once it's stored in Notion, it's stored. It's not referencing the file on my desktop. It's actually the full weight of it is in Notion. And then you could re-download it back to your desktop or some other device if you wanted to. So that that's totally up to you and how paranoid you are about backing things up. Um, but so far, so good on my end. I've never lost a file because I only had it stored in Notion. Okay, go back to just the Notion share here. Uh, Tracy says, does uh, Scribner work in conjunction with or in place of Word? Um, I use it in place of Word for the most part, but when it was time for me to submit my book to my publisher, I exported out of Scrivener as a Word document. So it can work in conjunction with it. I don't know that I would do that except at the moment where it's time to part ways with Scrivener because your publisher doesn't use it, if that makes sense. I don't know that I would want to go be going back and forth, back and forth unless I had a really, really good reason. It's just cumbersome. Uh, Karen says, I'm challenged importing files from Word or Dropbox attachments. Would you be able to show us how to do that? I think, I think what I just showed you ex explained it, I think. Uh, but if not, go ahead and pop another question uh, into the box. Uh, Michelle asks if I use Notion for my scheduling and calendars, or if I use multiple tools besides Notion. So I, like I said earlier, I use Google Calendar for appointments and for my calendar. I don't do that in Notion. It's possible you could get that functionality in there and sync it all up, um, but I haven't tried and I don't want to. Um, I just don't, I don't, I, I can't explain why, but I don't want that stuff sitting in Notion. I want it separate. Um, as far as booking, like if people are booking on my calendar, that's all powered through something called Acuity scheduling. So I use Acuity. It's, it's similar to Calendly. I think a lot of people use that for calendar booking. So my Acuity account and Google Calendar speak to each other, and that's all of a system. Um, but I don't that doesn't enter into my Notion 
account. Kathy asks, how difficult was it to migrate from Evernote to Notion? I'll just reiterate what I said before. It was, it was fast, it was easy, and I couldn't have been happier. Uh, Tricia says, I often, uh, it looks like Tricia forgot a word in there. Maybe you worry sometimes, I bet, <laughs> about the stability of tools. Ah, yes, you clarified, you sometimes worry. Um, and so Tricia uses Notion based on my recommendation, but she's wondering if I've noticed whether it's buggy or is there a concern that it might be here today, gone tomorrow? Um, you know, it is not, like if on the scale of one to 10, with one being not buggy and 10 being buggy, Evernote was about a six. I would say Notion is like a one or a two. I just don't have problems with it. Um, so, and I, I only see more enthusiasm for Notion as time goes by, more people are adopting it. There are more templates, there are more integrations, there's more useful development. The people who work on this are active and they're making it better over time. Um, and they've recently introduced changes that make it easier to turn um, Notion into websites. So it's night and day from Evernote. Like Evernote felt like it was languishing. No one was working on it. It was stuck in the dark ages. Um, that is not the case with Notion. So I have nothing but confidence as of today that it's going to be around for quite some time. Stan asks if there are limits on the number of lists or notes. Uh, if you're using a free account, there might be some limitations, although I can't recall now what those limitations are, but it's a freemium sort of deal, right? So you, you get to use it up until a point, and then when you hit the wall, you will have to pay. Uh, so let me see what I'm paying currently to give you an idea. Uh, let's stretch this out a little. You can see it's both me and my business partner. And I am on the team plan at $8 per member per month. So that's $16 per month times 12, I don't, uh, $192 per year. Uh, that's more expensive than Evernote, no question. I think I was paying 60 a year for Evernote. Um, but you'll see that if you're on the free plan, um, it's unlimited pages and blocks, but you're limited to just yourself a handful of guests, file uploads, you know, are, are limited. That could be an issue. You don't have any version history, which might be a deal breaker. Um, so you, you get quite a bit, but if you're worried about uh, backups, uh, you'll, you'll want to get onto the paid plan. All right. Uh, Stan suggests that Workflowy might work as a sort of Scrivener light. I've heard of Workflowy, but I haven't used it. I, I could see that, that makes sense to me. Um, there, I see that someone is saying they found Scrivener impossible to learn, um, which I sympathize. And Katrina rec suggests um, the Scrivener coach, uh, Joseph Michael, and I want to second that suggestion. He has a really wonderful I think it's a free 30 minute tutorial on YouTube. So if you look for the Scrivener coach, Joseph Michael, um, you can learn the basics in 30 minutes. I think you just have to have the patience to, to watch it <laughs> and follow along. Um, so I do think it's, it's really life-changing as a composition tool if you're accustomed to using Word. All right, so I'm just seeing if I've, got all of the questions. I think I've answered some of these, I think I've answered as we've gone. Um, so I just want to reiterate, you know, if you do what you've got in Notion, there is a local copy, but it, it, it does get stored in, um, in the cloud. So that's how it's syncing across all your devices. But there is a local version. But again, I just want to add the caveat, there are spotty reports of it not having the offline access that might be as solid as you might want. It hasn't affected me enough, and I do use it offline, so but it hasn't affected me enough to be concerned. Um, and if you do store documents in it, you don't have to worry about retaining that document elsewhere unless you just like to have backups. Okay. 
Uh, Jane says, I do a lot of historical research and I print off historical newspaper articles. Could I copy them into Notion so they'd all be in one place? Absolutely. Um, I've been <laughs> one of my less conventional uses of Notion. And don't do this at home, folks, but because I was totally lazy. Um, when I was reading a book, um, rather than um, use an app that would like pull the text out of the image, I just took photographs of the page I was reading and I put them in the Notion note like this. Um, so this is a JPEG or something like that. Um, and th this is this is terrible. I should have never done this because it's not searchable. And if I want to have access to this text in a searchable form, you know, I really need to get letter recognition on this. Um, and I'm sure there's probably a Notion integration of some kind that would actually read the text and help me out here. This is not ideal. But just to show you that, yes, you can store whatever you want in these notes. It can be as primitive <laughs> as you want. Um, you can see that's definitely primitive. Um, and if I want to download that, I can. So I can download right here. <clears throat> and we should see it pop up here in a second. I hope. Oh, there it goes. We've got the Wheel of Death. All right. So desktop. Let's see Evernote snapshot. It's a PNG file. I'm going to save it. Here it is. I'm going to open it just to prove that it's actually there and not in Evernote. Uh, I need to do a full screen share. Hold on. Go. Okay. So there, there was the file in Notion sitting right there. I saved it to my desktop over here on the right hand side. And now I've opened it up in preview. Um, again, it's pretty darn ugly. But now at this point, you know, now I could use um, some sort of um, character recognition software to actually, you know, unless I wanted to transcribe it by hand, which would be crazy. Um, so yeah. So yes, Jane, you can do you can do that. And you can also, I think it's probably obvious, um, but you can also print from Notion um, if you want to. So, um, you know, if I wanted to print off this to-do list, all I would have to do is go up here and um, export, and then you can export it as a PDF if you want to print, that would probably make the most sense. Um, You'll also notice that there are some other options here that can be pretty useful. Um, some customizations of the page, um, which I didn't get into. This gets into more advanced properties. Um, you can also change the font if you don't like, you know, the default. Um, but it is, it is like it's you're not going to get totally designerly here, but there are um, some modest customizations. All right. Uh, oh, I yes. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share now. I'm just going to go back quickly to the slide presentation and let you know about some upcoming sermons. So in September, I'm going to be talking about my experience um, accepting sponsors, paid sponsors in my newsletters, or you could consider them advertisers. Also affiliate programs. I'm going to talk about all that fun stuff. This has become a more popular topic. Uh, in the last few years, as more people do Substack email newsletters and they want to have sponsors or advertisers or run classifieds in order to monetize it. So I'll be talking about that. In October, knock on wood, I hope to share some insights about Discord. I've recently started using it um, as a community tool. Um, so I'll, I'll be sharing with you some, you know, whatever I have learned in my two months of using it. Um, and I hope that I can draw also some more knowledgeable people than me maybe to, to join the chat or to join me live even if you're a, a, an avid discord user send me an email maybe maybe you can be a co-presenter with me um, and then in november i will talk about better slide presentations so you for those of you who are paying really close attention you would have seen that i actually put together some notes already about how to do better slide presentations so especially in our zoom driven world um, there's more need to be able to put together some decent visuals uh, if you like the visuals I do, then you'll want to come. If you think they're crap, you'll want to avoid this <laughs> coming. So you can find the registration for that at my website at the Sunday Business Sermon page. And then, of course, there are continuing paid online classes. Uh, the next one I'm teaching on Wednesday, it's on effective book marketing. All right. 
So we're now at four o'clock. I ended that perfectly, if I may say so, right on the dot. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope that this has been useful in figuring out what Notion might do for you, or maybe, in fact, you've decided Notion isn't really the right tool for what you want to do. But in any event, I I wholeheartedly recommend it as something that could be useful for your productivity, probably for years to come if you find that it's a good fit. So have a wonderful afternoon, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>